All right, so in this video, let's just um, let's just go through a partial pressure example problem. So we'll just draw here. Yeah, let's just draw a tank here. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this tank and we're going to fill it with um, some amount of different gases. So first of all, let's just make this look nice. <laughs> Whoops. Um, what's going on here? Okay, let's erase that and look at that. All right, we got this nice cylindrical tank. So what we want to do here is let's put in, um, let's say this is a 50 liter tank, okay? It's 50 liter, and let's um, here, let's pump some oxygen in from this side, okay? We're gonna pump some oxygen in from the side. Let's say we're putting 100 grams in. You know, not very much for a big tank like this, but whatever, and then Let's pump in some, let's say CO2 from the side. Okay, and we'll say maybe 200 grams. Still not very much, but you know, we're just gonna see what happens in here. Shoot that into the tank this way. And let's say this is, you know, about room temperature, um, about 20 degrees Celsius um, or in Kelvin. We'll just round to 293 Kelvins. Uh, 293 Kelvin. Okay, cool. So what we know now is inside this tank, we have 100 grams of oxygen and 200 grams of CO2 floating around, but we wanna be able to use our, our ideal gas law equation. So what we need here, let's write it here, this is PV equals NRT. Okay, so let's look at this. Well, we have our volume. Um, we don't have a pressure. That's what we wanna find out actually. Um, we know the gas constant, we know the temperature, and the number of moles can be easily um, converted by using just molar mass equations. So let's get started. Let's say, let's start with oxygen and let's take 100 grams of oxygen that we know we've put in the tank. 100 grams of, let's just keep this labeled, of oxygen. And we're gonna multiply by its molar mass to get rid of grams and switch into moles. So we have, this is over uh, one mole of O2. O2, and this molar mass is 32, 32 grams. It's going pretty slow, so of oxygen. And so if we divide 100 by 32, uh, just punch in your calculator, you get, uh, we have 3.125. Remember, grams cancelled out, grams cancelled out, so we're left with moles of oxygen. Okay, so now let's do the same thing with our carbon dioxide. And here, let's switch colors, keep track. Uh, so we had 200 grams of CO2. And so what we want to do again is we want to switch from grams to moles. So we will multiply by its molar mass, which is just one mole. One mole of CO2. And this is over 44 grams, which is its molar mass, grams per mole. Uh, 44 grams of CO2. Okay, great. So again, now we just divide 200 by 44 in your calculator, and that will give you it's uh, 4.54. What's a four? Five. Uh, this is moles of CO2, carbon dioxide. Okay, cool. So now we just took, you know, the grams we put in and now we have the moles. We know how many moles of each gas are in this container. So we want to start by calculating the partial pressures of each uh, gas that we've put in here. And so let's do that. Um, we can take, we want to find the pressure of oxygen. Pressure of oxygen, actually, let's just make that kind of like a more appropriate, it's more of a subscript you want to write there. So we're going to rearrange this so we'll have P is equal to N R T over V. Okay, so we'll start with uh, N, which is the number of moles. We have 3.125, 3.125, oh. this is moles. Okay, so then the next thing we multiply is the gas constant. And because we're using atmospheres, um, I guess we never really declared that, but uh, I'm going to express the answer in atmosphere. So let's just let's start with that. So we'll use the the universal gas constant uh, with its uh, this units uh, atmospheres per mole per Kelvin. So that is 0 0.08206, and that is 
oops, atmospheres per mole, per mole per Kelvin. All right, and then the next thing we do is we put in our temperature in Kelvin, which was 293 Kelvin, and we're gonna divide this all by 50 liters. This is our volume. So let's just put that at the end, divided by 50 liters. All right, so now let's do the same thing. Um, let's do the same thing here for pressure of CO2. Pressure of CO2 is gonna equal, well, the moles we have here. Again, we have 4.545 um, moles of CO2. And you know what, this is actually gonna be the same, the whole same back end. So let's just copy and paste this, save some time. All right, um, right, because none of these parameters are changing. So hopefully that's all cool. And anyway, so let's calculate this. Well, again, if you punch this in your calculator, I guess we should do this in blue, um, we'll have 3.125 times 0 0.8206 times 293 divided by 50. Uh, long story short, if you put that in your calculator, I'll just save you guys some time right now. Um, that is, in fact, 1.503 atmospheres. And I encourage you to, you know, just go through and check that. Make sure you guys are getting the same answers. And if you go down here, now we're talking about the pressure, partial pressure of CO2. And this is going to give us, well, all of this. When you work it out in your calculator, we're going to get 2.186. 186. Uh, and this is atmospheres. And the reason this is atmosphere is because of the units that we chose to work with for the, the universal gas constant. Okay, so now what we need to know is we want to find the total pressure of the gases inside the cylinder. And so what we were talking about before is, well, we can just calculate P total. Let me just write it like this. P total is equal to, well, it's the pressure of all of the individual gases we've added. So we have the pressure of O2 of oxygen plus the pressure of CO2. Well, that seems simple enough, so if we just fill these in, we'll have the pre total pressure in our system is 1.503 atmospheres plus 2.186 atmospheres. And this gives us a total of, um, that is, let's see, it's 3.689 atmospheres. And again, just double check you're getting the same things. Um, and this is our total pressure equals total <laughs> it's going really slow. Uh, total P. Total pressure. There we go.